All right, good morning, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Petrotish webinar on investment case for hydrogen generic uh, by Mr. Podesta. I am Shahram Pur Mohammadi, uh, represent Petrotish today and act as the facilitator in this webinar. As you already heard from the organizer, you are entering as listening only mode and muted before we proceed the event. Let us check if you receive my voice properly. There is a window in front of your platform and by clicking on that arrow, you will see the full window version with a chat box. Please type the word hi or hello so we can make sure that we have established a full communication. Yep. The outline of the today webinar begins with a brief introduction to Petroteach and then we introduce our distinguished instructor, Mr. Podesta. Next, we will follow and listen to the webinar lecture, which lasts about 30 to 45 minutes, and short information and introduction to the course related to this webinar will be given. And finally, we will have a Q&A session for approximately 50 to 20, 15 to 20 minutes. Petrotech is a global provider of high quality training solutions to the energy sector. Currently, we are providing more than 200 training courses by up to 60 distinguished instructors with high track record from both academia and industry. Our training style includes public and in-house courses. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Petrotech was more focused on the distance learning during the last two years. However, we are happy to inform that we have resumed our face-to-face -face courses in different locations for the year 2022, and as well as we will continue for the next year. While having established the face-to-face -face again, we are also keeping virtual led instructor possibility option for our participants. For more information, please visit our website, www.petro-teach.com and download the course catalog. You may also follow us in social media such as LinkedIn and do not forget to watch our videos in Petrotish YouTube channel. The event today is a part of the webinar campaign that Petrotish is offering you this year and Mr. Podesta, who is a subject matter expert in the opportunity shaping project front and planning and investment analysis, and we'll talk about the investment analysis and opportunities in the hydrogen technology. So we welcome Mr. Podesto, and happy that he can join us today. Uh, Tim is an independent consultant and active as a subject matter expert and advisor in project management, and in particular investment analysis Front end planning and benchmarking assurance. He has deep experience of oil and gas, petrochemical, and energy industries. Team has extensive experience of developing and de delivering impactful training and facilitation during a 35 year career in British Petroleum. He has a strong back. He has a strong track record of delivering cross cultural programs in strategy, change management, and process improvement, and is passionate about professional development, learning, and sharing learning with a focus on the net zero agenda and the potential for a hydrogen economy alongside clean electricity. So let's uh, move to the presentation. And uh, I will remind you if there is any questions, uh, it will be answered during the presentation, or you can basically post your questions at the end of the session. So I'm going to give the floor to Mr. Podesta to address his presentation. Uh, here you are. I presume you have the ability to share your uh, slides. Tim, do you hear me? Yes, thank you, Sharam, for that kind of introduction. I just want to say a little bit more about myself uh, to, to, to bring my uh, presence uh, more into life, as it were. I have 35 years of experience working with BP, completed my time in 2016. I started as a, as a mechanical engineer. 
and through my professional development, did an MBA and through that moved from technical to commercial and operations leadership roles. And I became a successful program manager. The last role I had at BP, uh, so successful that, that, that the program delivered the, uh, the safety and reliability benefits across the group that were uh, set as the benefits at the outset. And I had the opportunity to, to move on. I'm now since 2016, an independent consultant. I've built on the expertise I developed at the time around being a, a SME, a subject matter expert in the matter of opportunity for shaping, project front end planning and investment analysis. And I've been applying those specifically into the world of decarbonization and hydrogen. And that's what I'm keen to be sharing uh, a little bit with you today, but also through the course that I've been running uh, on, on, on that subject, an investment case for hydrogen is the course which I'm gonna talk a bit more about today. I'm passionate about learning and about sharing that learning. I, I've got this, this mantra in my head, which is every day is a school day. So I'm actually keen through doing even this 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 marketing this mark this webinar to, to learn more about uh, uh, the subject in terms of getting uh, uh, getting feedback from yourselves. So the course that I've developed and, and delivered in a number of of, of uh, forum has has three parts, and based on my experience of doing investment analysis, you need effectively sort of three things. You need to have a, a strong sort of foundation or umbrella of look, what is the business context? What is the business case for this investment that you're looking at? And the second one is to have a strong underpinning of investment analysis, a, a robust approach. I'll share a little bit about that with you today in terms of my experience of that. And then with those two things in mind, there are, you can then create the examples the alternative cases, the base cases, and the scenarios that you need to consider in doing any good investment analysis. And as Sharam said, as we go through today's session, if you do have any questions, or uh, please put them in the chat, we'll have time at the end to cover those in more detail. And if, if, and if anything comes up as we go through by way of clarification, I will attempt to cover that as well. So on the three parts to the agenda, in terms of shaping the business case, uh, certainly from my experience, there are, there are four elements to that. And I'm going to say a little bit more about those in a minute. The technical, commercial, political, and organizational aspects to having a robust business case. When we look at the fundamentals of investment analysis, there are, there are, there's the cash flow. And in fact, in the course that I have given and I'm, I'm We'll be giving uh, in the future. It will be looking at creating a cash flow model, looking at the investment criteria around that. And, and, and for those of you who have some experience of doing investment analysis, to those of you who have none, I hope to bring everyone along together in terms of, of understanding of what we mean by a, a good investment case in terms of cash flow, the assumptions and economic analysis. And then most interesting is applying the, the, those fundamentals of having a good business case, understanding what are the, the actual projects which are, are likely to be successful, understanding of the cash flow for those with the, with the assumptions. I've got a suite of examples that we'll look at. There's probably, I'm going to look at two in particular today, just to give you a sense of, of what it takes and how these things shape up. Um, and then that's in the context of uh, bringing all this together. Hydrogen is, is, is not new, uh, but it is new in the sense of the world is seen to be moving towards a hydrogen economy as part of decarbonization. And I've got a number of stories I share through, through the course I run, uh, right back to when was your first exposure to hydrogen? Mine was in chemistry class at school and that experiment where I actually remember the sound of the hydrogen burning, the pop sound of the hydrogen. So we were, so it's important to sort of bring, put, it, put the, the, all of this, this good theory into the context of, of it's all about hydrogen and its place in the future of cl dealing with climate change. These are 
two slides on the first part of that agenda. This slide is, is how I like to describe the, the business case, how, how it should be shaped, and how it effectively covers four aspects. And in the context of hydrogen, technical, the technical context for the business case is so important because we are pushing the boundaries in terms of whether it is reforming gas, whether it is the carbon capture of the CO2 in what form is the blue hydrogen process, whether it's electrolysis of wind or solar electricity, the different types of electrolysis and the scaling up of that. And then of course, the, the, the other aspect of the hydrogen value chain is, is the use of fuel cells. And, and it's, a, it's a lovely story I like to share about how the fuel cells were part of the Apollo program and got humans to the moon. So that's the technical aspect, very important to the business case. Then there's the commercial aspect. Hydrogen has, relies very much on a supply chain from the, uh, the raw materials that might be used to produce the hydrogen right through to the partners that need to be involved in particularly in developing new technology and, and making supply chain work through to the market, where that might, it's a function of, of what price there would might be for the hydrogen, what volumes might be available, might be sellable, the need to, for there to be demand, and over what length of time. These are all fundamental to the actual assumptions that need to go into an investment case as well. Politically, huge topic uh, dealing with climate change. Lots of, lots of strategies being developed in various countries around Europe and around the world. Uh, the EU has a strategy itself. And, and, and basically how the political aspect, the policy makers, how they will support the regulations that are required all the way from the basic permitting required for, for the projects, whether that be for even for the, the renewable energy which is required to do the electrolysis of the hydrogen, right to the regulation of the use of hydrogen, to the market segmentation, to the creation of, of markets which recognize hydrogen uh, in whatever form it might be used, whether it's for buses, for marine, for energy, for even for the petrochemical industry. Then there's the, the need for support in developing technology, pilot plants, grants, and so forth. And finally, the market making. Um, if any of you have been involved in gas business, and I've spent all of my time working in gas business, the actual creation of the market for gas to create that supply chain, to create the infrastructure, the infrastructure companies being uh, effectively become regulated assets, the same sort of process will be going through to create a hydrogen economy, maybe even using some of those gas assets or creating new ones, but there's a strong uh, synergy between the two. And in fact, the organizations who are getting involved in, in hydrogen are those who probably have a background in gas or maybe even today are operating gas assets. And then finally, organizational, and, and that's sometimes forgotten in terms of looking at the business case, the context for any business case depends so, so much on the organization who's looking to make the investment alongside the partners. And it's so important in, in doing an investment case for, for, for hydrogen or for any investment case is understanding how it fits within that organization's strategy. How the organization is, is located, where is it in the world, uh, which regions, which countries is it in? Those are the places which might be its natural territory where it can, can apply uh, its, its knowledge, its skills, in developing projects and developing business. Governance, what is the structure behind the investment? It, what capabilities the organization have in terms of um, both uh, commissioning the, the investment, uh, but also commissioning the project? Does it have capability in terms of operation and, and developing projects? Is it gonna rely on, on other partners? And does it have the capability to actually deliver projects? Does it have a recognized project process and is it capable of, of del delivering those? Uh, part of the issue is, is choosing the right project, but also doing that project right. And at the end of the day, any organization making an investment needs to understand it, the roots of the value. What, what, what's going to underpin the value? Why is this project going to be successful? Is it because the investors have access to a cheaper hydrogen or, or better technology or are located near to customers. Those are all things that need to be um, 
related to the organization's uh, context um, as part of making the business case. So that in a nutshell covers what I describe as the, the, the umbrella, the business context, what's, what's the shape of the business proposition that the investment case is, is looking to achieve. But then is it, is it in terms of assessing whether that's going to be viable, there's, there's being able to do a robust investment model. And I'm, as an engineer and project manager, having been exposed to doing investment analysis, I believe it's so important that as an energy or engineer or project manager, it, it's very helpful to understand the economics, how value is calculated, what underpins the value for a project that someone is, is working on or is leading. Um, so at least they can have conversations with the economists, the business people, uh, the accountants, so that when decisions are made or when their projects are progressing, uh, there can be confidence that the right project is being done in the shaping, but also that project is set up to be done right, that the risks have been identified are being managed. I like to describe it as, as wrapping a scarf around the analysis. So any, any investment analysis needs to be simple and clear. And that's where the Excel model comes in. And as, as part of the course that I run, uh, we actually will develop an Excel model together. Uh, we'll, in the simplest form, we will look at the, how uh, the calculations are made, but then we'll actually create one to look at a particular investment case with the assumptions that are, are available. And those assumptions should be clear and complete. I'll show you in a minute uh, how I like to describe assumptions for investment case, the elements that need to be uh, considered. And those assumptions are often considered uh, as, as source, as, as those, those are the areas which will identify the key risks. So if you have an assumption, let's say for the, uh, the, the length of time a project will take to deliver, uh, the one of the key risks is, well, if it, what's the impact of it being late? What could cause a project to be late? So the assumption around how long a project will take and, and the risks around that become critical in, in having confidence in a robust investment model. And finally, there's this thing which I call is the red face test. And this is where whoever is responsible for proposing an investment, whether they be the project manager or engineering manager, they will be asked to stand up in front of a board or government's board or steering committee to say, well, uh, how confident are you that the, this project uh, will be successful? How confident are you in the assumptions that are being made? How confident are you in the work that's being done? And to pass that test, you need to be confident that you've done all that groundwork. Uh, you've got a good understanding of the case. And if you're able to present that and avoid uh, be becoming too too red in the face, it's a it's an expression that uh, you, you might come across in, in North America or or in the UK. If you can avoid that, uh, then then you are uh, effectively uh, you can you, you're confident in your in the, in the in the investment that you're proposing. So passing the red face test in front of executives. It's something that I've, I've done a number of times in my career, and some of the stories I can share about that will bring that to life as part of the, the course. And when I talk about cash flow, I like to talk about cash flow, a J curve. You can see here this is the shape of the J, where you have the uh, the investment below the line, the return above the line, over time, and that this is the basis for the put a number of the investment um, criteria. There's two that I major on, basically from my experience and from talking to people from other, other industries are, are fairly common. One is NPV, the net present value, which is the discounted cash flow over time and discount using a discount rate, which is another area of, of, of um, discussion, which we, we can go into more detail. And the eternal rate of return is effectively the interest rate, which is equivalent to that, that sort of cash flow. And then 
the importance of the assumptions. And I describe these as, as, as the score assumptions. There's the assumptions around the sanction, whether a project should, should go or not go. Probably the most uh, the point of where most value can be made or saved. Are you doing the right project or are you stopping a project? You have the capital, you have the operating startup, which is effectively how long it'll take before the investment starts to operate and there are, there are returns available. There's the revenue, which is a function of the whatever is being sold or the benefit. Uh, for a gas or a hydrogen project, it would be the volumes, uh, the, uh, the price, and, and then, and then the, the endurance of the project. At what length of time is it fair for a particular investment to consider uh, as part of its uh, natural life? Many projects, uh, what I call as industrial type projects, up to 10 years life would be reasonable. A, a new refinery unit or an expansion on, a, uh, on a, an oil field or a gas field. Strategic investments, you need to be looking at 20 to 25 years, um, particularly if you're gonna make a return. And that's typical in the, in the gas business, but also will be for hydrogen as well. The, a bit to make a strategic investment requires a lot of confidence in the future for the market and in the investors that the risk is worth taking. And this is where the link to strategy becomes so important. And, and there's a number of stories that I can share around gas business and what, how on earth can you be confident? What assumptions can you make, which will cover a 25 year life for a project? But we'll, we'll look at that and through the examples that we'll come to. Then the third part of the course are other examples. And where I start, and it's good practice from, from the training I did and when I learned my investment analysis was, well, yes, you have your investment case, but what is the alternative? And you do that for two reasons. Uh, one, what is the alternative uh, is gonna be your competitor. So you need to know uh, that you can compete against the alternative. Um, I, I, and also the alternative could well be the price setter. So if you look at a future market for gas or for hydrogen, the alternative source of gas or, or, or hydrogen will be effectively, uh, effectively underpinning the value you might get from your project. So the competition will show up in the market, in the price, and, and even in volumes as well. So, so in terms of the investment case for hydrogen, where my premise is that the, uh, the long-term uh, goal is what's called green hydrogen. And I'm, the, the colors related to hydrogen are useful. Um, you effectively have a whole rainbow, but at the end of the day, uh, it's important to understand in terms of the value chain, uh, the elements which are coming together. And I'll, I'll explain that uh, when we talk about, about green. But what we have here in terms of the alternative to the green hydrogen, which is electrolysis, of, uh, of, of electrons to be green. They have to be effectively zero carbon in their source. So you're looking at uh, wind power or solar being the main ones, making it effectively hydrogen from electrolysis is entitled green. The alternative then is, is gray hydrogen, which is reforming of, of methane, reforming of gas with no carbon capture. In fact, much of hydrogen, which is made today for use either in refineries or to make ammonia, those are the two main sources. And some, some places to make methanol is used in sort of clean fuels facilities. The hydrogen is made in a reformer and the carbon dioxide is emitted to the atmosphere. So it contributes to, contributes to the, the climate problems that we have. It's called gray hydrogen, but in the short term, that's probably the, one of the price setters for hydrogen. And, and so uh, what I've developed in, in creating an investment case is we've actually looked at that as a starting point. And, and in the course, we'll create a spreadsheet uh, based on that. And that spreadsheet will form the basis 
for looking at the alternatives, for looking at the blue hydrogen, which is the same process, but with carbon capture. So the steam methane reforming plus carbon capture, commonly known as blue hydrogen. And, and I try to use good assumptions as an independent, I, I use public available data. And there's an, the IEA have done some great work and a particular study they did a couple of years ago, or uh, they went into some detail describing the, the engineering scope and costs uh, for a uh, steam methane reformer with and without uh, carbon capture and carbon capture to two different levels. We'll see that in a minute. So this is the alternative, which we will create a model for on the course. And we'll look at specifics, a 10 year life for a new steam methane reform without carbon capture, and then a 25 year life for steam methane reformer with carbon capture, and to two levels, 50% and 90%. And we'll look in more depth as to what, what that means in terms of uh, costs, and also in terms of um, uh, the impact on, on the, effectively the, what's sometimes called as levelized cost of hydrogen or effectively the, the hydrogen costs, which I describe as, as required to have an, an investment with a near zero NPV. So an, a neutral, an investment which, which just, just pays back the cost of capital for an investor. Uh, that's what I call the zero NPV. And it's a, it's a, it's a good test for any investment and for, for sensitivities. And, and so we use, I use that as a way of testing an alternative prices of hydrogen. So, to, so we're able to do a comparison between what would be the alternatives or even the blue, blue hydrogen steam methane reforming with carbon capture against where the, the centerpiece of what I've been looking at in terms of the investment case is, is two. I started with these two, which are relevant, still relevant uh, today. Um, I first did this uh, about a year ago, still relevant today, but there are other cases come up, um, which I will demonstrate on the course. And through using a spreadsheet, which is a way of, of actually having a, a common frame of looking at investments, we can actually have a conversation about the impact of, of various assumptions and how that might in, in impact the attractiveness of investment, particularly in terms of the, the hydrogen cost, which it might support. So these two cases, uh, what ones, both are on refineries. And the reason I chose refineries is uh, two reasons. One, uh, my background is I spent a lot of time working on refineries. So I know uh, how refineries uh, operate, uh, investment cases, how they looked at on refineries. And hydrogen is not new. Uh, in fact, if you go back many decades, hydrogen was, was actually, a, it was and still is a byproduct of many refining processes. And going back many decades, hydrogen is considered as a, as a waste fuel. It became part of the refinery fuel network. Over time, it was recognized that hydrogen uh, could be used for particular processes like hydrocracking, hydrogenation, uh, desulfurization, and actually, and also making um, biofuels, so it can be a, a feed into processes which make um, effectively uh, fuels from things like palm oil or or other uh, other routes which are considered uh, carbon carbon neutral. So hydrogen has become more important. Uh, so, but and refineries. They, they're one of the biggest consumers of hydrogen today alongside ammonia plants. And then therefore, um, because hydrogen in those locations today is, is produced probably from steam methane reforming without carbon capture, they become natural places to replace with uh, clean hydrogen, whether that's through electrolysis of wind or solar, or whether that's through steam methane reforming with carbon capture. Um, so refineries then are the natural place, one of the natural places for the hydrogen investment industry to start because you get scale. Scale is so important in doing, in doing uh, in investments. And then from that, there's this concept of hubs, uh, clusters, 
and these these hydrogen pr production facilities can, can then be linked to transportation hubs where hydrogen can be effectively sold and used in, in trucking facilities and buses, maybe even marine as well. And, and so these two cases are based on refineries, one in Germany and, and one in, in the south of France. The one in Germany is um, it's, it's, it's inland, so they have the connection to wind power offshore. Uh, the key thing is, is having access to having an Orsted as the, uh, the energy producer part of the partnership. And for both of them, the, there, is, there is the sort of pilot phase, what I describe as an industrial scale investment, probably needing some grants to get it supported. Uh, but with the ambition to go to very large scale, 500 megawatts is, is, is a large scale um, hydrogen production. And, and I've made reference to work done in Australia in terms of the assumptions that I'm using. And, and I found that in, in doing the investment analysis and looking at the assumptions, particularly the costs around the cost for the electrolysis and for the ancillary equipment, that becomes one of the key decision points. Well, what, what assumption should we be making per kilowatt for investment? So with those two base cases, uh, uh, I started to look at them in some detail that, that sort of highlights the opportunities, the challenges, the sensitivities, which need to be in place to help uh, the investment case for hydrogen, putting clean hydrogen get off the ground. Uh, and it becomes a very rich conversation. The other cases I look at are, as well as ammonia, which I've mentioned, we'll look at uh, use of hydrogen in industrial facility and in, in, in bus transportation networks for big cities. Um, and, and both those examples are, come from, from Scotland, where I grew up. Scotland has a huge opportunity in terms of hydrogen because of the large offshore wind potential. But these are schemes where the, the concept uh, for industrial heat, the opportunity to be making uh, one of Scotland's biggest exports, if I guess maybe after oil and gas, which is whiskey. So clean whiskey using hydrogen is in the, in the stills. And then Glasgow, where the opportunity there is, is to be using some, some of the hydrogen, which is could be available from using um, the wind power and, and and some new solar facilities to create hydrogen for the local bus fleet to go alongside electricity. Because one of the points I always make in looking at investment case for hydrogen is, well, what's the alternative? One of them actually is one of the first ones is well to actually use electricity. That's something that uh, is important to consider. And that's why when we look at electric cars versus hydrogen cars versus diesel cars, um, there's clearly uh, some trade-offs in terms of uh, batteries versus the cost of, of hydrogen, hydrogen storage. But that's, that's something we, will, we can look at in more detail in looking at the investment case and the sensitivities. So that's the third part. Those are the examples, which are clearly based on, on the first part of the course, which is looking at the, what is the business case? What is the shape? Is this, how, how robust is this? Then looking at the investment analysis, how robust is the understanding of the cash flow, the assumptions, and that those are the fundamental umbrella underpinnings that we we'll, on the, that we we'll look at the examples for the investment case in hydrogen, ranging from gas methane reform with carbon capture through to the different applications of, of electrolysis of hydrogen in refineries, in ammonia, and in using it for, for, for transportation as well. I'm not forgetting the most recent one I looked at, which is the use for energy, the use for hydrogen in power generation, which has particular potential advantages because of the ability to be, uh, for hydrogen to be the way that the energy from the variability of wind and solar could be stored uh, in the form of hydrogen, which can be available to, to cover sort of peak power arrangements. So the course that I'm pleased to be working with PetroTeach to offer is 
likely to we've got two dates there, online and a face to face. The objectives are, are listed below, um, but in essence, what I'm hoping to to leave participants with is a much clearer understanding of what the investment case for hydrogen is and, and it isn't. What, what's required to really put a good one together in terms of the business case, the underpinning cash flow, and then applying that to particular examples. And, and, and in, in a way that I'm hoping that uh, even with the sort of engineers and project managers can be more conversant and actually participate in the value conversations such that, uh, particularly in the matter of, of decarbonization, it's so important that we end up doing the right projects and also we, we set up to do them right which is a subject of another course that I do, which is best practices for project development. Um, subject for another day. So I'm keen uh, to, to, to leave you with that as, as an outline and, and hand back to Sharon for uh, just to say a few, few, few more words. Thank you very much. Uh, I think you could basically, basically hold that one. I think, uh, thank you very much, Mr. Podesta, for the nice and very interesting presentation. So we can start the Q&A sessions if there is any question from the attendees. Uh, they can post the questions, we can answer them. Otherwise, uh, myself could ask a question, what is basically requirement for those who participate in the course because it seems that they should have kind of have a good competence learning about the hydrogen uh, technology because it's basically making case of investment then it means that you know, should know already the uh, the technology itself from the technical viewpoint or will it be covered for a person who is basically starting from it's new, it's new completely to the, yeah. the So what, what I would say uh, it's not necessary for um, anyone, for people to be expert, um, but to be interested in the technologies. And then as I say, the three that I will major on are the um, steam methane reforming and carbon capture. We can talk about that. There's the electrolysis. Uh, we talk about the, the, uh, the the basics of that and, and some of the alternatives and, and then this we, we can touch on fuel cells but fuel a fuel cell is basically a reverse electrolyzer and it's converting the hydrogen oxygen back to electricity so we'll major on the reformer and the ele electrolysis and I, I, i'd say i don't in i'm assuming that uh, participants will come with an interest in those maybe some knowledge and in fact, some of the conversation we have on the course, we, we, can, we can sort of, um, because the, the technology is moving quite fast, we, 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 it's something I can learn from what others are seeing as well. So I'd say not necessary, um, but on the other hand, we won't go into any deep technical detail, but, but I do, hope, do intend to bring people up to a certain level uh, in terms of the technical as well, and also on the investment analysis as well. 